we focus on um, <clears throat> pyrolysis and gasification technologies, and we mostly uh, look at how those uh, technologies can convert waste materials to things other than carbon dioxide, water, and heat. And the key there is that by using a pyrolysis technology or a gasification technology, it has a limited amount of air or oxygen that's brought into those systems. And what that allows uh, these technologies to do is produce a synthesis gas. And this synthesis gas is primarily carbon monoxide or hydrogen. And that CO or hydrogen can then be utilized to make power uh, or make fuels, liquid fuels, which a lot of companies are trying to do, or of course, uh, make other types of products. For example, synthesis gas is uh, one of the uh, primary building blocks for things like plastics. And so in terms of uh, sustainable waste management, by utilizing uh, technologies like pyrolysis and gasification, there is a platform that can be developed where a waste material <coughs> that uh, has organics, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and plastics and paper can be put through this uh, technology yielding a synthesis gas that then that synthesis gas can go across different options, either to be further processed to make a product like plastic, to be further processed to make uh, fuels like a liquid fuel and be distributed a little bit more easily uh, in local or in rural environments, or to be directly combusted and generate, uh, and generate power. So it's one way, if you will, to offset the use of fossil-based materials or what we might think of as uh, materials and resources that have a limited lifetime. And here, as we uh, produce garbage and waste, of course, we want to extract all of the recyclables and try to do as much uh, composting with the, you know, pure organics, food waste, and so on. But non-recycled, contaminated types of wastes are very well suited to go through these devices to then make some products that uh, the world can use. The area that we are working on is uh, what's considered the conventional, the traditional uh, means, which is combustion of uh, municipal solid waste and other waste uh, directly, and then using the heat of the combustion gases to make steam, and the steam then produce electricity, or can, and some of it can be used for district heating or industrial uh, processing. Uh, the, the means which are used for what we call now waste to energy, although waste to energy could include other means of making fuels, but right now we're talking about combustion with energy recovery, are basic two. The, the, the dominant one is combustion on a moving grade. It's used in over 800 plants in the world already. <clears throat> and the second one is one which has been developed the last 10 years, mostly in in China, which is called circulating fluid bed combustion. They are efficient in terms of recovering energy, but if you could make, of course, a fuel from some of the waste, then the thermal efficiency of using a fuel is higher. We are working on basically waste remediation, advanced waste remediation methods by using biological platform. The basic objective of our research is to use as a potential feedstock to recover carbon as well as nutrients by estrogenic fermentation. Estrogenic process is our focal process where we try to process the waste and convert it into hydrogen in the first stage. Along with hydrogen, we will be getting as a volatile fatty acids which will be recovered as a platform chemicals or many of the uh, many of the organic synthesis. So the hydrogen once we we extract from the waste and the volatile fat acids uh, along with COD we have about 50% of carbon.
Ramban, we will try to integrate with bioelectrogenesis, which is a hybrid process between acidogenesis as well as electrogenesis, so that the carbon will be converted into electricity. So by this way, in the second stage, we will be recovering about 80% of carbon along with the nutrients. So we'll be able to recover two forms of energies along with platform chemicals. In the third stage, the organic fraction present in the wastewater will be reduced uh, by 90% by using photosynthetic, where the 20% of carbon in a mixotrophic mode will be converted into biomass as well as lipids. So in a biorefinery framework, we are trying to address the holistic problem as for waste and integrating with the remediation. So by way of this, there is no need for going carbon uh, reduction or carbon removal up to methane in a single stage. By, by way of going to methane, we are losing all the carbon material. So we are trying to refine the waste, the different process, and trying to recover value-added products as well as energy. So in this direction, we are trying to develop various models, self-sustained models, closed loop models so that we can take the material waste and you know, produce various raw materials including bioplastics, fatty acids as well as uh, uh, lipids. So oh, we are trying to close the loop, remediated waste or wastewater along with reduction in CO2 to a certain extent. So in this direction, we are trying to address the waste issue in a circular economy by uh, circular economy and trying to put waste as a futuristic feedstock in the place of uh, fossils using for our energy as well as materials. So most of the material energy requirement can be addressed with waste. That is our basic objective. In this direction, we are working on various waste by models.